everyone, and welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. It's episode 613. Unlucky for some, as they say, but not for us, and not for you, because you're in for a great, uh, great episode of uh, Aussie stories. Hopefully, some Aussie stories about tech news and some international ones, maybe that have piqued our interest anyway through the week. So we'll tell you about all those in a little moment. And jeez. Uh, that microphone's coming out loud. Uh, and also some little technical issues this week. If we appear to be out of sync, if you're watching on the video, just please uh, bear with us. Turn the brightness down or something so it blurs in a bit. <laughs> so, uh, But apologies for that if that is happening to you. Uh, we are brought to you this week by ATH Web Hosting. Uh, you can find them at athwebhosting.com.au and you can find some drag and drop website builder free for pro and business plans. Operates on SSD drives that so make sure it's nice and fast. None of this mechanical drive rubbish. It's SSD all the way. Uh, immediately activation of your account SSL certificates Australian support which is vital these days domain registration easy install WordPress uh, Joomla and Drupal and also we are brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au uh, where you can go to that site and register your new company if you're thinking about registering a company that's how you do it online super fast you have all your legal legal eyed documents ready in your inbox in 10 minutes walk out the front door start your business going all right, we got a big show this week and a special in-studio guest, another one I know. It's uh, crazy times up here on the Gold Coast. Uh, let's have a chat to, we'll introduce him first, seeing he's a, he's a special guest. Uh, it's Paul from Toowoomba. How are you going, Paul? Hey, good, Glenn. Hey, guys. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad. And uh, let's talk, and for our regular, we'll talk to Paul again in a second, but we'll find out who else we got here, the usual suspects of Jordan. Hey, Jordan. How are you, mate? I'm yeah, here. Not too I'm bad. I'm half here. Good. You only got one ear in too, haven't you? you got yeah, a... one ear in, oh. one ear out. You're listening for the cat. Yeah, yeah, good. One foot in, one foot out. A pregnant cat, someone told me. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. And yeah. uh, Joe, <laughs> here come Joe. Hi, Glenn. How you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, all right. Well, uh, well, well, let's go through them all again. Uh, Paul, what have you been up to? Entire Computer Solutions in Toowoomba. What's been going on? Entire Computer Services, yeah, we've been uh, sorry, been busy up there, mind you, at the moment on a uh, bit of a break on the uh, coast here, and uh, hopefully it won't be going back uh, to too much of a mess with the uh, Windows Update uh, 1809s coming up. Anyway, you'll hear more about that, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure we will. It's Windows uh, 10 updates are crazy. And uh, J- uh, Jordan, what have you been up to this week? Anything exciting? Uh well, I've had a, a few things going on. I think, as you just said, we've got a few sync issues because I decided to lash out and buy a video kid, a uh, video kid, <laughs> sorry, a video card for my kid's computer so he could play Fortnite, which has kind of has kind of put a spanner in the works for my PC that I was using to stream the show each week. Oh, that's um, no good. But uh, aside from that, everything's okay. We'll, we'll fix the sync, sync issues hopefully by next week, but... Good. Yeah, all's good and the heat's killing me, but that's good. Good stuff. And uh, what about you, Joe? What's been going on in your world, sunny Sydney? Well, maybe we've been doing some renovations here at home at the moment this last past week. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I know what they're all about. We've been do- trying to do some painting and, uh, yes, got a lot of things to do. Plumbing issues, uh, roofing issues. So, yeah, good fun, isn't it? You need a you need a tech tech renovations. No, not a tech renovation. This is actually a uh, kitchen renovation. We're doing a new kitchen. We're laying some tiles down on the floor. Good stuff. And, um, yeah, so I've got some tradespeople out at the moment doing work there. Mm. Oh, good. Oh, nice, good. The um, future the, the future of uh, employment is the tradies, isn't it, Glenn? Uh, oh yes. If you think a, everyone else is going to be taken over by robots. Yeah, look, if you if you don't have a trade, you're not going to be making money, are you? They, they are just raking it in. Builders, plumbers, electricians, you name it. They just love it. Um, and I mean, you've got some bricklayers now. They've got uh, a tool out there that makes um, that lays bricks for bricklayers too. I saw like that. A, I, like yes. a robot-style bricklayer, you mean? Like a artificial intelligence? Yeah. yeah. They make the whole building, not just the... Um, they make a whole building, not just the bricks. Is that what you're talking about? So, well, yeah. Well, so far, I've seen one of the videos I saw, but they weren't actually laying them with cement. They were just plonking them on top of each other, and not even in the say like the strong, the strong way. You know, half on top. You know how they lay bricks. They were just doing one on one on one on one, but in a sort of a square motion. But they reckon they're going to refine it. So we'll see what happens. Oh, so that's not the 3D printing type. I think you might need to uh, push your microphone a bit towards Paul over there, Glenn, because we can't hear him. I don't think his is on. Oh, he's a bit too soft, is he? No, he, I can only hear him coming through yours, not his. 
Oh, right. Okay. Um, that makes any sense. Yeah, and I think I know why. So um, if you can put up with that, that'll be good. How, That's how... right. We'll just listen extra specially careful when he talks. Yeah, see, what yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll speak up when I've got to speak. Every time he opens his mouth, yeah? <laughs> yeah, well, so, yeah, what happens is... Uh, is when we when we get an in studio guest, we're not really set up for it. Here. So uh, you know, it's a big rush and fumble to get all the wires and everything uh, hooked up. So I'm I'm pretty sure what's happening is the the podcast Paul will come out great, but the live Paul, well, he's going through the webcam. I think. So we'll see what happens. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, but don't I'll talk. Watch the podcast later, won't we? Don't talk too loud, Paul. If you see that little line go too crazy, yeah. you're talking too loud. Is that crazy there? That's okay. You keep it there. Don't sure. go. Don't do too much. Can I get one of those talking line things for my kids? Yeah, you, my the socks are better. Yeah. Socks are better. What just straight <laughs> over gag. the head or something? Straight, straight in the mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as long as there's no foot in the sock at the time. No, well, you know that makes it even for a special, special <laughs> sock. All right, let's get into some. Uh, yeah, let's get into us. Let's get into it and see what's going on. Uh, all right, I didn't mention that you can find us on YouTube, as you know, dot com dot au uh, forward slash Aussie Tech Heads and Facebook dot com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, get us on Twitter as well at Glenn Goodman at Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, hashtag Oz Tech Heads. Don't forget the Aussie Max Zone and My Tech Opinion. And let's get into the first story. Microsoft, as we mentioned last week, did you, if you would have heard that Microsoft was close to surpassing Apple in the in the most valuable capitalized market in the US uh, or company in the US market, and it has this week surpassed Apple. So it's end of the week, uh, the most publicly traded company in the US. Microsoft market capitalization, capitalization stood at 851.22 billion US dollars. Uh, based on its closing stock, Microsoft capitalization stood at 851. Based, on, oh, I did that twice. Don't know, but anyway, that's what's going on. So Microsoft is up there. They're attributing their success and their growth to their cloud sales. And uh, if you can just look around, uh, yeah, the Azure cloud is everywhere. Uh, the it is, a- isn't it? The AWS cloud is everywhere. So everything is going into the cloud. And uh, I'm not sure if just while we're talking on Microsoft and to to bring your mood down a bit there, Jordan. I was talking to oh, Paul. There's so many stories about it. I know what you're going to say. It's all over the internet this week. Yes, it, this is one of Paul's stories. So we'll let him tell tell you. Uh, what tell tell us about your sad story for Jordan, Paul? Please. Yeah, sorry to tell you, Jordan. I don't uh, think it's as sad as it sounds. But anyway, if I think yeah. it's the same story, go for it. Who knows? I'm okay. Yeah. Afterwards. Well, here we go. Okay. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me. Okay, guys. Microsoft is reportedly ditching Edge for Windows 10 for a Chrome-based browser. Uh, I'll just read through the first couple of uh, uh, paragraphs here. Uh, Whether you're using Google Chrome, Opera or Brave, I haven't heard of Brave, to browse the web, under hood it's all based on Chromium. Chrome's Blink Engine has more or less been a de facto way to render the web. Microsoft has long tried to avoid that fact by constantly working on Internet Explorer, then Edge, but it seems no more. Microsoft is reportedly reportedly embracing Chrome's dominance with a new replacement browser for Windows 10. Um, Windows Central is reporting that Microsoft is in the early stages of a project codenamed Anaheim uh, that is currently uh, slated to replace Microsoft Edge for Windows 10 instead of continuing to use the company's Edge HTML engine Anaheim will reportedly be reportedly be built up, uh, upon Chrome's open source Blink engine. Now, there's it goes on to a bit more detail on that. Not that I'm familiar with uh, the Blink engine, um, some of those things, but it sounds to me uh, a bit of a backflip for uh, Microsoft to some extent, as uh, I reckon they're. Uh, they're, they're they're cooperating and uh, integrating with other uh, like Google quite well, in in my opinion anyway. And uh, unfortunately, I've been investing quite a bit of time in Edge recently, uh, thinking that's going to be a way to go in the future. But I'm not sure if I want to uh, invest so much more time in it if it's going to uh, conform to Google Chrome myself. What do you guys think? I think uh, yeah. Is it a, is it? Do you think it's a bit of a case that Microsoft has? Like, what's in it for them with their own browser anyway? Is it a bit of that? Like, why do they have their own browser? Do they need their own browser? Uh, how do they make money out of their own browser rather than just pushing all the searches through Bing? Um, 
yeah, why use Edge, I guess, or why use Internet Explorer? Is it that, you know, Internet Explorer is fraught with errors and bugs and, and work around since, I don't know, since, since ever, version one, and so which has led to Edge virtually. And Edge, although it, it's quite snappy and fast, but it still hasn't got, all say, all the support, all the extensions that maybe the Chrome and Firefox has. So, I don't know, do you think this might be just, we give up, let's just use Chrome and be done with it? And just move and concentrate on on the on the cloud. I don't know. That's maybe that maybe. What do you what do you think, Joe? Any ideas on that? Yeah. Look, I think it's got something to do with this migration, where um, Google and uh, Microsoft are allowing each other's systems on on the Windows Ten. I got. I think it's got something to do with that. Right. Yes. That's right. Yes. You probably you could be there. From uh, what I gather, look, I I I didn't hear a word of what Paul said, so I hope I'm not kind of repeating or touching on anything it's probably just as lucky that i read the story which i think may have been the same article but from what i gather it's they're not actually they're not actually getting rid of edge here say they're just they're changing the core of it and using the chromium base core of oh. microsoft sorry of the browser which is the same kind of core as google so whether they're actually going to keep the name as edge or they're going to name it to something else it's just going to have a different core, which means they're not going to use their HTML based Microsoft HTML based, whatever it is core, if it's, that makes sense. So it, when, when, and they say, I think in that article, they say something about how, um, uh, um, uh, what's it called it? They're going to say how developers, you know, are going to be really happy about it because when they are creating web pages and stuff, they're not going to have to test it out in, edge to use the hate hmm. the edge html engine and then check it out in google to use how do they pronounce it paul the anim and anaheim as in uh, disneyland when i read the article yeah <clears throat> as in disneyland anaheim california anaheim that's it and i didn't hear hmm. you say it so i didn't know how it was pronounced sorry but that's that's kind of the way i understood it. it's just two different cores but they may still just slap their own name on it still hmm. so have Does you got that kind of make sense yeah, I think look, it could be could be a mixture of all that sort of stuff. I guess like if I think yeah, I think you guys are on the right track. I think you know Joe mentioned the 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 merging and whatever. I think that's on the bit of the bit of the track there. But have you guys ever? I haven't heard of this Brave dot com. Have you heard of Brave dot com? No, no just brave. not Brave dot com. Just Brave. You'll have to. Did Paul say something about that? Yeah. What yeah. In that? the first paragraph. Um, yeah, Brave dot com. Yeah, no, not Brave dot com. It's Brave. But that's where you get it. Oh. Get oh okay. Sorry. <laughs> the, it's a browser. It's apparently, uh, let me read this here, browse the web up to eight times faster than Chrome and Safari. Apparently loads uh, new sites, major sites, two to eight times faster than Chrome and Safari uh, on mobile and two times faster than Chrome on desktop. Well, yep. more and more importantly, it just simply uses the Chromium engine as does um, uh, Opera as well. Chrome's Blink engine is what they call it. Can't say I've ever heard of this Chrome's Blink engine. So I'm assuming the back the back end is going to be uh, Chrome driven. Front end will still have Microsoft's own little branding and the way they do things, and Chrome will probably still do the do okay. their thing. So yeah, so I've got a very big communication gap. All, we're, all I can hear is <laughs> well, can you, not, not only you, but also the people that are listening to the podcast via the Facebook are saying that they can't hear. Um, can't hear Paul pretty much at all. All right. Can you hear Paul, Joe? I, I can't know. All right. No. So you so, need to put your microphone a bit closer to him so he can share it or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a break and we'll be back soon. Okay. Hang, hang in there. Yes, we, we are back we're now. Back. Now, just a quick little break. Uh, did you enjoy that little break music I, I put in there? I hope so. Now, did we finish off with Brave? Are we happy with Brave? Oh, yeah, let's. Do, I'm, I'm gonna brave enough to think. Have it a go. I, I trust you on that because I don't know what you said the whole time on the whole story. So, all right. Well, okay. it'll be interesting to see. Just on that note, it's just going to be interesting to see how Microsoft uh, handles this because this is this is a big move for them. To uh, they've been flogging edge for. Are you saying that Ed that? Brave is Microsoft's. No, no, so we, forget the. We didn't hear the whole article before when you spoke. Yeah, no, so Glenn's gone off the track. Brave is only one of the search engines which use uh, Chrome's Blink engine. Oh, okay. Chrome's right. it's about Chrome's Blink engine, which is going to be in the background. It'll be interesting to see 
how they'll probably still call it Microsoft Edge or they'll come up with another name. It's going to be interesting to see how improve what improvements it's going to make for uh, Microsoft Browser, whatever they happen to call it. I'm yeah, sure I the reckon, marketing department's going to have they'll their, probably just keep yeah. it as Edge. I reckon. Yeah, maybe, and it might all happen in the background. Probably keep doing all the same things, that, but it'll just be using the Chromium or the Edge, the the the, the, the Google engine. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been investing quite a bit of uh, time uh, trying to get familiar with Edge, and I've got to say, uh, contrary to what others say, uh, the the I don't use a lot of extensions, but they've got extensions uh, which well, aren't like too it. bad, and it works pretty darn well, and it's got. Uh, it's got a, f- a couple little features I like. One or two things I don't like. Um, one for those of you who who want to print to a Google Google Cloud connected printer, that's one thing you can't do with Microsoft Edge. And I wonder if they're going to integrate that uh, as a part of this process. Yeah, I'm not opposed to it. I, I think that if I, you know, I'm a fan of Edge, and it's it's not necessarily that I'm a fan of the Microsoft engine, but I'm a fan of Edge. I like the interface. I like the browser. So if they're gonna you know, if they're going to have Edge built on Chromium or Google's core or whatever, their engine, but however we say it, and, and you said it before, Anaheim or whatever it is. Anaheim. Anaheim. Then to me, that's a plus. I reckon I reckon Edge could be awesome if it's got the, the core of Google in it. This is a combination of two huge companies that will yeah. potentially bring to us a very effective uh uh, integrated product. I think it's, it's. I think it's going to take a long time for them to get it all right, but I think they're heading the right way. Mm. Oh, look at it, mate. Windows, so much more better too if it's got a browser that's built in with a good. But even know. even today, I, I just just to finish up on this. Even today, I came across a uh, an issue where uh, a girl was trying to log into like the Microsoft Live, the Office three six five portal, and she was following a link from one of the emails that she received. And didn't load, just wouldn't load. Half of the page got up and just wouldn't load. And she's going, is there a problem with the internet? Is it me? Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so I loaded Edge up and, and opened the same link and it worked. So there's still issues with stuff not working in Chrome and the oh, other absolutely. browsers. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely there is, yeah. So they're going to have to fix all that. But, uh, but if they can bring, the, like, well, like Paul says, if they can bring the two good ones together and make something mm. you know, awesome and, 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 and Google and Microsoft are willing to, you know, or should I say Alphabet and Microsoft are willing to, hmm. um, you know, make something happen. Good, I yeah. reckon. Yeah, I think so too. Now, uh, Joe, you've got a story about some data breaching. There's been a couple of them this week. Yeah. Has, everyone, has anyone ever used the um, Quora? Has anyone ever heard of it? Or does anyone ever use Quora? I, uh, I go to it only when I link to it from asking a question. I don't think I've signed up to it. I haven't checked. What yeah, look, I, I sometimes, you know, look at it. There's pretty some pretty good articles on there, and it's m- more like a, a question than an answer. It's like an unofficial forum, if I can call it that. But apparently there's been up to 100 million um, users of Quora that have had some sort of a data breach by some hackers that have um, been discovered that break into, this, uh, break into the Quora systems, and um, they took off with some of the data that was there. Now, the data that they took, was uh, usernames, their email addresses, and um, an encrypted version of their password. So um, if a user imported data from another social network like Facebook, Twitter, etc., it was also possible that their contracts, uh, their contacts and or demographic information could have been taken as well. Yeah, it's it's no good because when you... I'll let you finish off on that one, uh, but I've got another one that's, that's happened through the week. It just seems to be going crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, apparently they, they reckon that um, some private actions of the site may have been taken as well. That includes requests for answers, downvotes, and direct messages. Uh, content posted anonymous, anonymously uh, will um, remain anonymous. However, um, Quora says that it does not store identifiable information in their posts. But you wouldn't think, like, in this day and age, though, like, everyone's supposed to be security conscious and all this sort of stuff and passwords and, and all this are, are hashed and whatnot. Why, does, why, why doesn't they just make everything hashed or salted or whatever, you know, whatever terminology or technology you want to use? Like, why doesn't it all be like this? Like, why are these companies and Quora, now they're no, you know, no... Um, 
you know, no, no poke in the dark. They're a big company or a big organisation or a big business or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, um, they they're fairly, fairly large organisation. And they're a techie type of thing. Like, why are they subject to this? And why are they losing uh, plain, plain text data? If I could just give I, my... I guess if anyone really, really wants to, they can always hack into our system. You know, yeah, there's right. always people out there that are smarter and brighter than the people who are building these systems. Mm. If I could just point something out. Um, in, in the past, uh, when there has been a data breach of some sort, there's been no criteria necessarily for a um, company that's been breached to report to any special agency that they've been breached. Whereas with the new GGTVR, G, those new uh, European rules on uh, data breaching, um, it's changed that whole ball game because there's serious um, ramifications for organisations that have had data breaches that don't uh, disclose the fact that that's happened. And that's they, they probably the breaches probably happened as much as as much as they used to as they do now, but it's more like I'm assuming that um, it's more publicised because it's a requirement to publicise breaches. Mm. Well, I think I was just looking up there. Uh, I'm on this web page here because I thought that in Australia we had some data breach notification laws. Um, it's worldwide. It's not just Australia uh, or your Europe. What? Well, the laws would be specific to Australia. They would. They wouldn't be worldwide laws. They might mirror. Yeah, the the big one that has a that's fairly invasive is the European one, and you would have seen plenty of websites you go to. It talks about oh, there's an acronym uh, GDPR, I think it is General Data. Oh yes, that, that's GDRP the, General Data. I forget what it's called. Yeah, that's the thing where you on all these websites you go to now. Yeah, for your cookies and that. Yes, yes, um, but when you but I just wanted to, to go on about the a uh, the uh, notification laws. Uh, I'm just trying to find. Yeah, there was something like uh, uh, I can't find it, but there was something like if you're a, it depends on the type of and size of the company that you are and the status of the breach. Yes, and you got like, and I think like in Australia, it's something like if you're say the national bank and you have a data breach, I think you've got like 24 hours or something to notify the government about the breach i think it's pretty pretty tight well it has to and the government will decide i think it'll go it has to be uh go to the people and the media as well i believe maybe yeah i think because you've got to get it out there i guess just for the consumer's safety you got to get it out there so you can change your passwords but i think like with these with the all these ones like there's a site called that i think we've mentioned it before have i been pwned now you all know about that you that's just, awesome that's all you just go into that site, and I'm going to try and have I been. I don't even don't know why that doesn't come up, but anyway. Uh, but I'll, I'll look for that in a sec. But Joe, how is that all you wanted to say about the uh, about that one, Quora? Well, the only thing I wanted to say is that if um, if you're a user of that site, uh, like I am, um, the moment you try and log back in, it does ask you to reset your password. Um, so therefore, if you use it. I would recommend you actually go in there and reset your password, and um, at least that way um, you know that you know they don't have your information any longer after that. You know. Mm. Well, I've just found that have I been pwned? I'll show you the, the result here. It's uh, have I been pwned.com. So you put your email address in, just like that, and look. Oh no, I have been pwned. I've been pwned on ten breached sites. So it'll tell you what sites you've been breached on. So my data, my email address, password, hints, passwords, and usernames have been stolen from Adobe in 2013, Apollo in 2018. Um, Apollo was the sales engagement startup. So I don't know what the hell that is. But that, that, took, that, that breach had a lot of stuff. Emails, employers, geographic locations, job titles, names, phone numbers, salutations, blah, blah, blah. In May 2014, Bitly... Um, Gave my data over to uh, the hackers. Daily Motion, Dropbox, Exploit.in, Online, a Spambot, Plex, the TVDB. Oh my goodness, no! And XSplit, which I don't even use. So that's how much you know. You don't have to. The people don't have to hack you straight up. They can just get by these. You know, the, the, some hacker will hack the, a big company like Quora, and then sell your information on the internet, and for, to anyone that wants it. And there you go. You've been. It's gold, isn't it? Yeah, you've been pwned. But um, yeah, how's that? Is that all, Joe? Yes, it is. Yeah, basically, the last thing I was going to say about that one is that the um, the Quora have actually um, 
notified law enforcement um, last uh, about the breach which happened on Friday and they have hired digital forensics to investigate how it happened because they still don't know how it happened or they're not telling us how it happened. Mm. Uh, all they're saying is that they were, um, they had a malicious third party was able to uh, gain access to their systems and that's all. So they're getting a, a digital forensics to, um, a digital forensics firm to investigate what happened there. Yeah, so look, because I just wanted to mention as well as, as much as the Quora, the Marriott has had a breach also. So the Marriott, well, let me get that one up for you there, up to 500 million customers affected by the Marriott breach. Uh, so this is uh, the Starwood Hotel's reservation system has been hacked and apparently this began four years ago, exposing data including password numbers and payment cards. Uh, the hack is one of the largest in history. Remember, you'll remember the Yahoo hack not too long ago. I think that's been put down as the largest in history. The FBI said it was looking into an attack on Starwood, whose brands include Sheraton, St. Regis, W and Western Hotels. It advised customers to check for identity fraud and report to the... Well, that's FBI, but, you know, do something, change the password. The hack began in 2014. Great uh, notification laws there. <laughs> Uh, to create the world's largest, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 327 million customer records containing information, including passport details, birth dates, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses were exposed. So crazy stuff, crazy stuff. I guess at the end of the day, make sure that your your email password is unique and hard. That's that's my best tip. All the others, apart from your bank, all the others can be whatever, but your bank is not the same password as your email. Your email is a very hard one to crack. So, uh, and you should be pretty safe. Yeah, so... Uh, oh, LastPass or something like that. I wouldn't even do that. I, I don't use LastPass for my email or my bank or PayPal or anything like that. I just... No, but the I'm beauty of here. LastPass is I think that, and, and even I'm a, I'm a culprit, I don't do it either, but with LastPass, you're supposed to generate very, very strong passwords oh, that you yes. couldn't possibly remember. And use those on those on your email accounts and in your social media accounts and things like that. And then having one simpler password for LastPass, you know, or whatever, but it's still a good password. Mm. You know? I think every, the, the, the big mistake is people use the same password on everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, we're crazy. Or use password as password. Now, um, mm. uh, Jordan, do you have anything you want well, to I did have about? something kind of along the same lines. I've... Um, uh, it's called uh, No More WhatsApp. Oh. I don't know if you read this. This might have been last week's story. I didn't read. Um, how the uh, proposed encrypted message access laws will affect you. So this is kind of almost the same thing. Australia's uh, government wants to pass world, force law, uh, world first laws that would force technology companies to help police access encrypted messages. Attorney oh, General Christian about. Porter has said a high number of people involved in terrorist plots and serious organised crime use encrypted messaging apps, obviously, such as WhatsApp. But not only does encrypted, uh, encryption keep text messages secret, it underpins the security of the internet from email to online banking. Technology companies, human rights groups, lawyers and others aren't happy about the law and and given the bill's powers will be, what's that, will be unprecedented globally it's unclear how this will play out, uh, blah, blah, blah. I haven't read this article yet, as you can tell. Uh, so this is what we know so far. Uh, well, you know, we don't really even have to go into the story. I just don't think that government should be able to pass a bill that allows, you know, that allows them to have rights over encrypted messages. I don't care whether, you know, we've got terrorists or we've got, or whatever that it is, I think that you know, message, encrypted messages should be allowed, shouldn't they? Don't you agree? Well, that's right. But they've already passed the law. It was uh, passed yesterday. Oh, was it? I think late yeah. at night, wasn't it, Joe? Yeah, that's yeah. right. It was passed late at night. Well, you they might had, know uh, more about this than me, then, Joe. So you can fill me in because I've only just read. Yeah. The well, what's happened is that they passed it last night, and uh, they had some bloke on their TV having an interview, and they said, "Look, the only time we're going to." Uh, you know, enforce uh, the law on this is when we have uh, the need for uh, some investigations for you know terrorism or some sexual offenders, and by by before we actually look into it, we actually need to get a court order, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, well, as long as they've got hoops to jump through, I think. Look, I I agree that they should be able to you know get to some messages, but I think that the fact that they can 
get whatever messages they want with twisting a few arms and, and getting what they want is kind it, of is kind of a breach of privacy as well, isn't it? Is it right that they can open a letter from terrorist A to terrorist B? Oh no, I think that if if, if they can get the, the you know, if they can get the permission to do that sort of thing, then you know what's you know, what's best for the country and everything and all that is good. I just I just you know, it just makes you wonder, you know, who's but, got rights to what and when and how and who's gonna use it. But can't lawfully. they get can't they get permission to uh, to get the encrypt un- unencrypt or decrypt the encrypted message? Well, like I said, if they can if they can jump through hoops and get permission from high courts and all that sort of thing, my like I said, my concern is just that there is an ability there mm. yeah. for someone to all of a sudden be able to, you know, you know whether they're going to do it lawfully or not is the big question, isn't it? Yeah, I know what you mean, Gordon. You know, mm. there's always a there's a situation where, like. You want to trust them to be able to do the right thing and use it only when needed, but they'll if it's not this year, it's next year or the year after that. Eventually, they'll come out. Well, oh, look, you know, we've sold some information to such and such a firm, and yeah, so- you know, someone says, you know, we want, we want, we're going to give you, you know, a couple of million dollars to unencrypt this celebrity's phone so we can get her messages to her boyfriend, and you know, money talks. You know, Is- like all of a sudden, there's an ability to do it, and every time they 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 change these laws, they get a little bit less stronger, you know? What about... Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering, though, would it, would it be a matter of, okay, people can actually do that now and they just don't do it because of the law? Or is it just a matter of, uh, no, they, they, they don't I know mean, let's, do I mean, look, Joe, I mean, let's face it. If the government really want to get into someone's phone, do you think that the law is going to stop them? Well, not really. But if you have a look at the case that they had overseas yeah. with the iPhone and the FBI... They reckon they couldn't crack into the uh, into the iPhone. Yeah, and now Apple are using that as a marketing campaign to say, "Hey, we're the best company in the world because we're going to protect your data, and we're not going to even give it to the government if they pressure us." But they well, did that's crack. right. But there, there was also a time when they did breach it. They did get through. The FBI had, I think, I saw there was a story a few yeah, weeks back which box. I mentioned this little box. They, they had a device that mm. was about thirteen and a half grand or something like that that you can buy. I've got one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there was um, a device that you can buy, and then once Apple got hold of that device, they found where the loophole was, and they they blocked that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, well, what about the these this health record, my health record, uh, Joe? Did you are you withdrawn or are you in in or out? Uh yeah. Look, I'm fifty fifty on that at the moment. Mm. So you're still in. I'm still in at the moment. Yeah, but I'm I'm, I'm looking at. It's it's seen whether I'm going to leave it like that or whether I'm going to you know withdraw from it. So what would be your what, why are you fifty fifty? You worried about personal just health information getting out because so like say all your information financial wise with the ATO anyway, all your family history and whatnot is with Centrelink anyway. So are you just worried about health information getting out? You know what I'm worried about, Glenn. I'm worried about insurance company getting my information. And then using it against me when I go and renew my policy every year. Right, right. Yes, yes. Well, I guess you just either. That, that, that's what. I, that's where I find the, the the grey areas in all of this. You know, mm. if it was used the way it was intended to, I'd say yeah, fair enough. Mm. But I, I, I don't. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. What they're going to do with it? I don't believe that it's going to be uh, you know, safe. I believe that eventually someone's going to come along and say, okay, well. Um, uh, you were sick last year, so therefore your policy is um, is is going to be up in value, and we're going to you know charge you more on excess and, and et cetera, et cetera, because they have that little bit of information. Mm. You know? The government's the government's not allowed to share that information that's in there, are they? Where we no, it's, no, they're not allowed it's to. It's supposedly but, private. But mm. you know, it, it's like it's like um, it's like this thing that we're just talking about with WhatsApp, you know. At first, it was a, a good idea that everyone used WhatsApp because it was supposed to be secure and all that. And now, the, now they've made legislation to say, "Oh well, no, well we're going to be able to break into that." Mm. It's, so uh, what's what, what's going to change them? Um, what's going to change their mind? You know, in a two, three, four, five, six years down the line. Sounds like someone's like, flatlining now. We, we want to change legislation to be able to be able to give this information to other people. But like. Yeah, but but all that information now, like who the you can just look up your Medicare record now and find out you've been to the doctor last week and last month and and whatnot. All the information's there anyway. 
Yeah, but it's not public accessible. It's not public though. But it's not at this. My health record's not. Well, okay. It's not public. It's, you, it's yeah. I get in. what you're saying. It, it no, can... it's, it's a matter of the, 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 at the moment it's supposed to be the government access only, mm, but then it's going insurance the companies, health insurance companies, etc., will will feed their way through the system somehow to be able to have access as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're pretty paranoid too. Yeah. It's, well, what about you, Paul? What What are you doing? Are you in or out? Uh, I've done nothing, and as long as I do nothing, it means I'll be in, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, so me being like most Australians, I'll do nothing and I'll be in whether I like it or not. <laughs> yeah, so look, I haven't done anything either. Uh, I th- yeah, I don't know either. I, I, I am like you, Joe, 50-50, but probably for maybe different reasons. Um, I don't know. Do, do the pros outweigh the cons? I don't know. At some stage, don't you have to have a bit of trust somewhere for the government? Well, well you do, but that's, that's the thing with Facebook as well. If you go back and listen, look at the Facebook's done, First, they get you suck you in on all this information, and get, and get you to give it to them, and then all of a sudden, oh, we're allowing such and such a company access to our systems for such and such a reason, mm. and they make it sound like they're doing you a favour, but it actually it's, they're doing themselves a favour. But that yeah. is a, a capitalist company organisation where the government is not like that. No, hopefully, yeah, no, but yeah, they can I, still. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them. Mm. Yeah, there, yeah. There if was I a could, whole thing about point tax out. and. Um, and superannuation at one point where everyone thought that superannuation, you were safe, you would never be taxed. And now they started introducing tax 15 years later. Oh, I've never liked super, to tell you the truth. I've never, ever liked superannuation because my my thing was always, because, you know, going through work and everything, I've always said uh, I pay the littlest, little as I could. Uh, and if I got to a job that I didn't have to pay any, I didn't pay any. Because my thought process was if there's a war and the government's got no money, Where's, where are they going to get the money from? It's going to go straight out of the, everyone's super. And that's exactly where it'll come from. And so, and plus, also, I reckon that my super is better, will save me money by paying what I would have saved off my mortgage because I would get a higher return off my mortgage. I know people out there will go, you're crazy. That's not right, but I don't care. <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> but anyway, let's get off that. Let's turn on to uh, Channel 9. Channel 9 Entertainment turns to the cloud to stabilise its live streams. I didn't know they had a problem. They must have. Uh, 9 has switched out part of its live stream infrastructure using the AWS cloud-based services to improve the stability of the platform. It's all in Amazon, isn't it? Digital Development Director Kanal Ramchadani. It's a good name, isn't it? Told AWS reinvent last week that the company had seen sizable growth in its live stream since launching channels at the start of 2016. So I picked this story up, not mainly, not really because of uh, just, you know, whoopee doo, they're using AWS, but just the stat for the stats wise. At the start of January 2016, Channel 9, uh, out of the 9, the Now app, were doing a few thousand streams per month. So January 2016, coming up to January 2019, so three years later, uh, and then in June 2018, had a peak of 5 million a month. Um, so, uh, yeah, so they've been averaging, had a peak of 5 million a month, uh, averaging 4 million a month. So they've gone up from a couple of thousand to 4 million a month. So I think, uh, look, these live streaming apps, yeah, I'm all in. I watch them. I use them. They're good. Does anyone else in here use them? In here? Where's that? Well, My it's place? Just like, uh, Joe, do you watch on uh, 9... Now streaming? No, I don't use that one there. I do watch some of the um, uh, what do they call it? Callback TV. What do they call it? The um, Catch Up TV. Yeah, ca- yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's yeah, the, I watch that's some the... of that, but I don't watch any of the streaming stuff. No. Oh, yeah. that, no, that is that same. uses the same system. Yeah, same thing. Same, yeah, same sort of thing. But yeah, like I'll use. Uh, I don't know where would I use it? Look, I got a TV in the bedroom doesn't have an aerial so why go to the expense of you know putting a cord in i'll just just stream it put a chromecast in the back of the tv wham bam thank you ma'am there's my uh, free to wear that's good uh did we lose jordan it yeah, looks like looks like jordan's gone okay um what else you got uh joe um i've got something really interesting with um bluetooth devices apparently um bluetooth uh chip um, flaws have been exposed to enterprises um, to be remote attacked. Oh, everything's getting attacked. Yeah, this is another one. Millions of access points and other networking devices 
used by enterprises around the world may be exposed to remote attacks due to a, a couple of vulnerabilities discovered by researchers in Bluetooth low energy, which are BLE chips made by Texas Instruments. Mm. That BLE thing's pretty new too, isn't it? Yeah, BLE. That's that's the new um, technology that they're coming out now. It's yeah, um, Bluetooth four or five. Bluetooth four, which is designed for applications that do not require uh, exchanging large Think amounts of power, such as uh, smart homes and health uh, and sporting devices. Those um, devices that you know got Bluetooth between yourself and the phone. Um, basically, the way uh, BLE works is it stays in sleep mode and is only activated when a connection is initiated, which then results in um, low power consumption for that device. Mm. I think someone's got their live stream running. No, is it me? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Welcome back. I had it going through the phone because I I had this massive squeal in my ears, like feedback, so I couldn't put my headphones on. I'm like, what is going on? And I, I just I closed Zoom and restarted it. And then when I closed Zoom, I realized that there was a, a spam page in the window behind my Zoom, and they had like a, a whistle going, your computer needs repair. It was going <laughs> like an did, alarm. Did, so did you click on it and get it fixed? Yeah, it told me to call this guy in Townsville. Yeah, okay. Townsville? Well, there you go. He must know what he's doing then. <laughs> to Woomba. But I don't know what was it. I was sitting here going, there's something wrong. I thought maybe Glenn had sent me a, 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 a whistling sound. So I've missed the last five minutes. That's all right. I mean, something I wanted to throw in about that last story, whatever it was you were reading, I cut it from room now. But anyway. We're on to the uh, Bluetooth chip floors are exposed. Yeah, we're talking about Bluetooth uh, chips made by um, Texas Instruments. Um, yeah, right. This is a great episode this week, Glenn, audio-wise. Oh, it's all happening. I love it. It's all great. Why, why, why wouldn't you love an episode with lots of challenges? <clears throat> yeah, sorry, Jay. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, apparently, the Bluetooth um, low-energy chips work over distances of up to 100 metres as compared to your standard Bluetooth devices. Um, and the transfer rate is a bit slower at one megabit per second compared to one to three megabits per second on a normal Bluetooth. So, you know, they work over a bigger distance, but their speed is slower mm. and they use less power, these BLE chips. Now, apparently uh, researchers at the IoT security company Armis discovered that the Bluetooth vulnerabilities in these chips were used also in access points and other enterprise networking devices like Cisco and HP-owned Aruba networks. Aruba oh, networks. We were only singing the praises of Cisco today, weren't we, uh, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, well, I'm off them now. Yeah, <laughs> but there's there's been, um, wasn't there some modems and routers and stuff which included Cisco, Netgear, a whole bunch of them that uh, had a vulnerabilities only a matter of three, four, five months ago? Mm, yes. And that included Cisco as well. Uh, sorry, yeah, Genjo. Yeah. These have got the Texas Instruments chips in them. I'd get another look at that. Um, oh, that that's Bluetooth only, right? Yeah, BLE t- the, ch- the BLE chips. Well, how many APs, access points or modems have Bluetooth? Yeah, well, some of the stuff I think here that, uh, that Joe was also saying was devices that mainly in the healthcare sector, like little small devices such as insulin pumps, pacemakers, Oh, okay. um, so just the the little the little fellas, the IOT, it's right. IOTs, yeah. yeah. Just the little things. Imagine having a having a pacemaker that runs off Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah. Imagine the latency on that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think the majority of the reason for that is that it's just it's just sending data from the little pacemaker that's inside you to your phone or to another device. Um, so that device there could have that Texas Instrument chip in it, and. Um, could be vulnerable to the attack. Now, um, the actual attack itself, they call it bleeding bit, B-L-L-E-D-I-N-G bit. Um, it allows a remote, it, it, it can allow a remote and unauthenticated attacker to take complete control over the impacted device and can gain access to enterprise networks that it belongs to. So it's pretty... No, I don't but, want anyone hacking any Bluetooth connections to my Yeah, you got to be careful about these sort of things, you know. Um, if a Bluetooth low-energy device is turned on and the device is actively scanning, 
a malicious hacker can actually spend uh, send specific crafted packets uh, in order to trigger a memory overflow and then execute some sort of code to um, to hack into it. Yeah, so you have to be within range of this device. And what I'm not sure, what's the range? 100 of... metres. 100 metres max. 100 metres. And there's a couple that are only 10. Yeah, I thought it was. But this 4 must be 100. Is, is that what is good about the Bluetooth 4? Is it a longer distance? Yeah. yeah yes, right. the Bluetooth 4. Apparently, yeah. this um, after after they after they they run the code, they can then install a back door onto the chip, and then they can gain complete control over the system, in which the device works in, and 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 all the and all the the systems that the device works with as well. They can access that as well. Uh, in the case of access points, the attacks the attackers can use uh, compromised access point to spread to other devices on the network, even if the dev- uh, the network is uh, segmented. Yeah, so it's just saying it looks like the only ones that are uh, uh, conflicted are these Aruba, uh, Aruba devices. Oh, but- those are the Cisco ones as well. Any 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 chip that runs the BLE chip for um, tech that's got the Texas instrument in it that runs the BLE chip. I don't know the specifics of the model number, but yeah. if there's any listeners out there that um, that think that they may have something like that in there, they might want to go and look it up and. Um, and clarify what exact chip it is. I think the link I sent you, uh, Glenn, has got more information on the exact link, yes. uh, exact chi- uh, chips that are available. Yeah. So, like, and, yeah, as always, all these, all the show notes, most of them have links back to the uh, original, original article, and that this one's quite comprehensive. Uh, you can get the show notes at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast if you want to go further had- with those. Yeah. So, if anyone wants to know more information about that, they can go and follow that link, and it tells you which particular chips. Are, are, are involved in this particular breach. Mm. You have also, um, you were saying about how far away they are, 100 metres, but I reckon that um, the company said that they can double or even triple the um, the distance by using directional antennas. So that can be yeah. two, 300 metres away. Yeah, um, right. So, yeah, because I, I was thinking normal Bluetooth is about 10 metres. Hey, you'd probably see someone punching away on a keyboard trying to do stuff. But, yeah, 100 metres may not, 300 metres. Yeah, things are getting tricky, aren't but they? that device is connected to the internet. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure how they're, they're just going to have to plug that up, aren't they, that, yeah, that little and, back Yeah, and the thing as well is, is that once they've actually compromised the system, um, the attacker can then create an outbound connection within the um, the device Um it gives it access over the internet, and they no longer need to be in range. They can be across the other side of the world. Mm. Once, they, once they've device. got an IP. So I'm mm. guessing that that's, that's when they'll sell that particular compromised device. I really I don't think Bluetooth will ever take off the enough. BLE. Like, it, like, well, it, don't get me wrong, it has taken off, and Bluetooth's used in quite a lot of stuff, but I don't think it would ever take off to a point where, I don't know, maybe I'm kind of jumping the gun a bit but it's always uh, been a yeah. bit of an underdog bluetooth in my opinion no look B- BLE is going to be the next biggest thing even Telstra is looking at at BLE um, they're creating a BLE network to mm. be able to run all these IoT devices yeah we're not talking so it's, it's a can, big thing if I can put my two Bob there the bluetooth devices you're probably assuming we're talking about Jordan is uh, your headsets and your Bluetooth mouse and your little peripherals, but we're talking a different category of product. We're talking um, IoT uh, devices which uh, pull an IP from the uh, Bluetooth host uh, because it's it's usually a DHCP server of some sort. So once it's got its own IP, it means it's internet connected. That's how it's uh, different to Bluetooth we've used in our past. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Using Bluetooth in 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 place of um, you know, Wi-Fi. networking and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think it'll have its place because they're short. They're short it's distance. Not, surely, it's not faster than. You don't no, necessarily no, need BL, speed. No, BLE is not faster than standard um, Bluetooth. Um, it, I think, as I was saying before, it's one megabit per second compared to. Uh, but what about in comparison to normal Wi-Fi and routers and that sort of thing? Yeah, but the idea behind this is to have a, a small chip that doesn't use much battery. It's not about speed. When it comes to IoT stuff, it's not often about speed. It's more about um, uh, simply being connected, and, uh, and it's not about bandwidth. Mm. And is my is my voice coming through okay? 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're good. We're just, yep. we're, we're, we're just glazing over. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I think we're all glazing over tonight. I think the communication has just been broken down in so many places tonight. With yeah, no, that's gone wrong. So we're all a bit over the shop, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's um, yeah, Bluetooth, eh? That's uh, that's the way to go. But just don't, just make sure. I'm not sure how you're going to find out if your device has got that chipset or not. You'd have to really search the the specs and maybe just Google yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. And just just go to that link. Glenn will put the link yeah. up on our um, page on the on the Aussie Tech Heads page. Yep. And follow the link there, and it and it does give specific model numbers and stuff like that. So go and have a look there if you have any concerns. All right. Mm. Now, on a lighter note, though, Glenn, did you say something about before I got cut off? Before did you say something about Channel Nine? Yes, I was just pretty much just the stats of their streaming. They've they've moved some of their streaming to AWS, and uh, 2016 they were probably getting a couple of thousand streams per month, and now they're averaging four million. All oh, right, because yeah. I had a story about Network Ten. And what are they doing? Network Ten launches rival to Netflix and Stan with a surprise oh, price. Another one. Come another on. one. Yeah. Local streaming plays Netflix and Stan. Oh, presto. A new competitor in Australia with CBS owned Network 10. Yes. Rising the market with a comparable $9.99 price on its subscription video platform, 10. But I think All it's... All access. Yeah, I think, we, uh, I think we might have done that a few we weeks that ago. I, oh, a, few, a little while ago, but it's only going to show the CBS stuff, so it's pretty closed. Like, it's not... Yeah, a, right. It's closed house and... You know, really, another one? Is it really going to work? What, 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 what shows have they got? CBS. I think they I mean. had a few of the uh, the American ones as well, in comparison to HBO and stuff. I think. But it I've seems. Just closed the article now because I thought you said you'd read it, so but I it's... can't glance over it. But it seems that everyone's coming out. You know, Disney's apparently bringing it out, so they're going to obviously they'll they'll pull all their content from the likes of Netflix. Uh, you got the CBS coming out. They got HBO coming out. So all they're, they're splintering all over the show. They're all going to pull their content from the big ones like Netflix and everything. Mm. It's not. We're not moving forward. It's just. It's just splintering everywhere. So it's not going to help us out. Uh, mm. I, I guess I don't know what you do. It probably piracy will go back up again. You know, if it if it if it has come down at all. But um, but yeah, I mm. don't know. But uh, Paul, you had a you've got a story about. Huawei. Huawei, yeah. Uh, it's not so much necessarily about the uh, the story there, but uh, more about Huawei themselves in their current position. I'll just read through the first part of this. Huawei, Huawei Global's CFO arrested for allegedly violating US sanctions on Iran. Uh, Canada has arrested Huawei Global uh, Chief Financial Officer in Vancouver, where she is facing extradition to the United States for suspicion she violated U.S. sanctions against Iran. Um, I'm going to skip the couple of paragraphs. Um, the Wall Street Journal reportedly uh, reported earlier this year that the U.S. authorities are investigating whether Chinese tech giant Huawei violated sanctions on Iran. Miss Meng, uh, also known as Sabrina Meng, is one of the one of the vice. Uh, chairs of Chinese technology company board and the daughter of company founder Ren Zhefengshao. That's a big picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is understood Miss Feng was arrested on December 1st at a court hearing uh, and a court hearing has been set for Friday. Um, it goes on to say that um, Huawei issued a, a statement uh, by saying um, the company has been provided very little information regarding the charges and we're not aware of any wrongdoing. Is Huawei seeing this? Um, but what I wanted to bring up was not necessarily just her or that in particular, but Huawei uh, is just one of many Chinese companies, including Xiaomi, uh, Xiaomi which is uh, phones that I use and uh, and find quite, quite good, um, yeah, I'm using one here right now as well. Uh, all Chinese companies pretty much fall under the same uh, criteria that they, uh, the government, the Chinese government, pretty much has the right to uh, garnish information. I believe that uh, they pretty much have the right to garnish information from any of the databases that they have. I read a paragraph, something along those lines. Unquotable, mind you. Right. So, uh, well, Huawei's, you know, all over the show, aren't they? Australia's banned them. 
uh, from anything to do with the NBN. Oh, yeah, in New Zealand. Um, I've just recently been on holidays in uh, New Zealand and uh, I did notice uh, there's quite a large building with a big Huawei uh, uh, slogan on there. So I'm assuming Huawei has been up until recently in a big way in New Zealand. Uh, whether it's primary infrastructure, uh, tier one infrastructure, I don't know. But um, I was a little surprised to hear that New Zealand has uh, gone the same way as Australia and banned Huawei from uh, su- from supplying our uh, 5G network and mm. uh, top-end uh, infrastructure. And that will probably um, uh, go through more, more companies worldwide. Well, there must be some solid intelligence against Huawei. Like Huawei is state-owned Chinese company, as you know, um, par- uh, they try and say it's not, but at the end of the day, everything is, I think, in China, isn't it? So I guess there must be some solid intelligence to say that, you know, it's no good to let Huawei do um, India telecommunications networks. And look, by the, the, the way that, that, that China appears to be stealing a lot of uh, intellectual property from the, America and all this sort of stuff, like, uh, and, and there's what you can read and believe, they, are, they do steal it and go and knock it off and make their own stuff and, you know, with no regard or no regret, then, yeah, that's all right with me. If that's what the intelligence is saying, that's what it's saying. But it's not just, uh, my point being, it's not just who are we. It's going to include Oppo. It's going, like, that's a, they're, they're kicking goals, Oppo. Mm-hmm. Um, they're go, going to include uh, Xiaomi. Oh, which no. Is, <laughs> Xiaomi, Xiaomi is, is it's Chinese and... Uh, any Chinese company pretty much falls under that same criteria that um, uh, the government can access their databases, whether it's considered espionage or spying or whatever it is. Mm. Uh, I'm just afraid it's going to... Where's it stop? All, will all Chinese products be affected in the same... So all all te- high, like high-tech uh, products, will they be affected the same way? But uh, but then going back to the health records and all this sort of stuff and, you know, how you're worried about your information getting out, uh, are you worried if, if you're using a Huawei device that your information will get to the Chinese government if need be? It's not about Huawei devices. It's about the the primary infrastructure, the towers. Um, Australia, if, if several months ago, we, we'd all... We'll, we'll probably know, uh, Huawei and LTE were two companies that were banned from supplying uh, major infrastructure, specifically to Telstra and probably Optus, I'd say. Was it ZTE or LTE or something, was it? ZTE? ZTE. No, LTE is a is not a brand. No, did I say LTE? Yeah. Oh, sorry. ZTE and um, Huawei were two companies. I think they were just picked on because they're two of the biggest ones. But I reckon Xiaomi will uh, fall into the same... Same problem there. I can't see why they're any different. They're all Chinese companies are all government owned, aren't they? Mm, yeah, apparently. Now, can I just ask you where you get your pronunciation of Xiaomi from? From right. it's something. Well, I there's a few different ways, but uh, <laughs> I think it was you guys uh, discussed it for quite a while once, and it come from the name Shower and me. Shower. Xiaomi. Yeah. Oh right. Well, we just I, we just call it Xiaomi. Yeah. Well, how much research you do yeah. on that? Uh, zero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm researching because I didn't want to sound stupid. <laughs> right. So okay. So uh, let's move on because we're nearly at the end. I think I got a couple more. Joe might have one more. So I'll do mine. One of mine. TPG's twenty dollar prepayment for extras uh, are being called into question at the A Triple C. So uh, the guts of it is that when you sign up for a, a t- one of the TPG plans, you're asked to pay twenty bucks up front as like a say a deposit uh but it appears you never ever can get that back um <laughs> so it's not a deposit it's a payment uh, if it's, and it's something for nothing it is in their contract but apparently it's in the small print and the ACCC is taking exception to it and they've called them in for uh, misleading conduct the what does it say here? The ACCC allege the prepayment operates as a non-refundable fee and TPG retains at least $10 of the prepayment when a customer cancels the plan. So, yeah, the ACCC are all uh, up in arms. Um, but I think, Paul, you've, you've been sucking into something similar with another telco in, in past years. Yeah, in past years. It was, it was a long time ago now, but um, I remember I went with one shady company um, and they didn't initially have... Uh, they call it a security deposit, mm. and uh, I thought uh, initially they didn't have it. And then when I uh, went with this company, they uh, th- this company had really dirt cheap uh, pricing, 
and I went with them, paid my uh, deposit, and what do you know, six months later, they went bust, and my money disappeared, and I was paid like one cent in the dollar or something like that. Well, at 20 so cents. I, mm. I lost my, <laughs> I lost my, um, my uh, deposit. It was only twenty dollars, but the, the, I questioned them closely because I'd never come across this security deposit before. And I said, "What's the security deposit you got on here? You, no one else charges that. Why are you charging?" And they said, "Oh, we'll give it back to you when you leave us." Right. Well, the problem is they left me. I didn't leave them. Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess like all those little twenty dollars might be twenty dollars to you, but apparently the ACCC said that that with the TPG case that the customers uh, because they can't use at least the ten dollars of their payment since two thousand thirteen, ACCC estimates that TPG is likely to have retained millions of dollars paid by consumers. So, um, rort, to rort or not to rort? I think that's a little bit of a rort. Uh, Joe, what, what was your last one this week? It's about the good old USB dash C cable. Oh yes, oh, working yes. well. Well, see, the thing is, it's supposed to be a universal connector, but it's got some problems. Some people are having problems with it, and I wasn't aware of this. But it, it's a bit like the HDMI cable when you know they've got different versions and so forth of it. So um, I just want to tell the listeners that there's been a bit of confusion over the USB C cables used on smartphones your- and laptops. Um, the two cables look exactly the same but and, and can transfer data and power at different speeds. Not only that, um, not all USB-C's, uh, USB-C um, to headphone jack adapters are compatible as well. So they don't all like working together. I've got a little example here on um, what to look for when you buy them. Um, I'm not sure if this, the listeners can see that. Um, but apparently the USB cable is supposed to be a universal connector bridging together uh, phones, computers, power supplies, uh, some sort of accessory. But there's one big issue holding it back, and it's the USB uh, the USB name itself. Um, it refers to the actual physical shape of the connector, not the protocol that it uses. So even though the two cables look the same and, and they have the same physical connection, connection, what's happening on the inside of the cable is very different. Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, USB-C, that, yeah, I, I don't know why they've got to come out with different cables and different uh, different formats of the same cable that look the same. Can't they just well, all... yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit like the HDMI cable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, that gets, keeps getting updated and, and, and so forth. Look, I don't physically know how they're different inside. Um, and how they, they implement the particular, like, is it wired up differently? The protocol uh, or specification um, that the device uses determines what the cable can transfer and how fast it can send it. So, for example, um, cables can be limited to either USB 3.1, uh, USB 3, or USB 2 speeds even though it's some sort of USB-C cable. Yeah, right. Um, so, it, it, again, it depends. So, it depends on what the actual connection is, is like. So, um, they've got now a USB, um, USB-C uh, Gen, Gen 2 cables, which means they can transfer high-definition movies in about five seconds. You know, that's around about 10 gigabits per second. That's all right. With USB-C, um, you've got, you've got, there's two issues with US or USB, and that is power delivery as well as um, data, and they can progress at different rates. I've, I've uh, done a bit of research on not just USB-C, but uh, with charging and stuff like that, and found that um, USB-C, C, I think, is the only one which has the um, high amperage uh, it's called power delivery, I think it is, which could even be a higher voltage than normal uh, with charging. And, and just because, and they'll still, you'll still get a base uh, power delivery and a base data speed, but just the newer versions just simply go faster. That's all. Mm. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's around about 10 gigabits per second. That's all right. Um, the same, the cable that you use to charge your Android phone probably won't be as fast as the one that came with your external hard drive cable. 
to, to transfer data. So it makes things uh, complicated and confusing. Some USB cables can be used with a second monitor as well. Um, and some, um, and, and while those are, are not capable of sending a video signal at all. So it's sort of like, you've got to really be careful with these, with these. I didn't, I didn't realize there was so much involved with these USB-C cables. Yeah, they seem to be uh, just like anything. Nothing, always uh, complications with everything. But um, look, we might have to end it there. I think we might be having some troubles with one of the mics <laughs> back here, so I don't want to go on too much further uh, if, there's, if there's something wrong in uh, post. So we'll, uh, we might have to finish up there, boys. So, no uh, so thanks for coming in and thanks for listening. Uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, hopefully you're coming out still okay, Paul, but thanks for coming in and uh, joining us in studio. All right, thanks, Jordan. Thanks for doing the Facebook. Thanks for <laughs> giving it the best shot. Uh, thanks, no Joe. Worries. Thanks, Joe. Okay, see you later. All right, and thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, yeah, hope you found some value in it. So contact us at Glenn, Joe, or Jordan at AussieTechHeads.com. You can get Paul somewhere on the Facebook. <laughs> yeah, entire computer services. That's right. Is that right, services? Services, I got that right. All right, good stuff. Out there in Toowoomba. So say hello to everyone in Toowoomba for us. All right, that's it, everyone. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you all. Well, maybe. I'm not sure. I might be going away on holidays. I'll see what happens next week. I think I might be here. All right, we'll see you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. See you guys. <laughs>